Shabbat Shalom, Jim and Debbie Lehman from Wellspring, Israel. Oh, may you find this evening the blessings of the Lord um, strong on your behalf. And what a wonderful time it is to stop and have a shift in our mindset and enter into the divine day of the Lord that he set before us, that he prepared for us. It's, it's like a date. God said, you know, at this time, I'm calling you to me. We're going to have a date. We're going to come together and fellowship with God. Thank him for providing all this past week, all that our hands have done. But now we lay it down at his feet and we worship him. And our mindset shifts to the that rather than the cares of the world, stress and strife shifts to peace and joy. So we welcome you tonight with well, us. One of the Moads of the Lord, and a Moad is appointed time. Right. And I apologize if my voice is coming in and out. I've had sinus uh, upper respiratory and I lost my voice. It's just now coming back. Right. So this is a Moad. There's a weekly Moad, and that yeah. is. Shabbat, right. the last day of the week, when God created on for six days, and on the seventh day He rested, and then there's the monthly Shabbat, or the excuse me, the monthly Moad. Oh, I said Shabbat, the monthly Moad, our appointed time, which is the new moon, and then there is the the yearly Moads, Moadims, and that's the feast of the Lord, and we. Uh, have just come through Pentecost, the Feast of Pentecost, and we are now in the month of Savan. It is the month that we're going to celebrate, and uh, we are so blessed to be able to talk about that tonight and how that applies to us and how we can use uh, the, the highlights of each month, biblical month, God's month, mm -hmm. and use them as discipleship. It gives us a direction of how we should pray. Yes, yeah, how we should worship. Yeah, right, it does. It sets us prophetically. You know, if you were to ask us what time it is, well, we would look at the spiritual calendar uh, where God um, spoke to the children of Israel in Exodus. That's right. And uh, He said, "Hey, you know, as a covenant God." I have a new spiritual calendar. You know, they've been in Egypt. They had been a part of an old system or even a, a civil calendar. He said, I, I want to open up a new spiritual calendar for you. So we went through Nisan, which you will find Passover. We went through uh, Ayer. And uh, in the month of Ayer is that bridging month between Nisan, the first month and the third month. Savan. S excuse me the first month of Nisan and the third month of Savan. Are you, you getting all this here? The thing is we're in the third month already and we know it as the month of June, but in the spiritual calendar, God speaking and he has some revelation and he has some truths That's right. to share with us. So we're going to talk a little bit about Savan. So we've gone through Passover. We've gone through Pentecost. Right. And now, now we're in the month of Savan. And the month of Savan is the month of giving. The focus on this month is the month of giving. And why is that? Because this is the month that God gave uh, Moses the word, the Ten Commandments, and gave him the, uh, the, the, uh, um, I, my thoughts just went and gave him the blueprints of the tabernacle. Right. Okay. And, and, and showed him how he was going to take care of the children of Israel uh, throughout scripture. And so uh, it is called the month of two tablets or two breads. Okay. Or two loaves. Two tablets was the first tablets was written by God, and his finger. The second tablet was chiseled by Moses because of the, worship of the golden calf we we know that but it's also the month of two lows where god's going to give his abundance and harvest in the summer and the summer harvest uh at nisan pent at passover is the barley at at pentecost is the wheat harvest right. and at tabernacles 
is the great harvest and each one has significance in our walk with the Lord. Yeah. Okay. So Savannah is the month where you're going to see the supernatural provision both spiritually and physically uh, in the Old and the New Testament. And you're going to see that in this month, remember uh, how God, after he delivered the children from slavery, from bondage, he provides for them supernaturally. We've talked about this before, where they found themselves at the brook and the waters were bitter. And Moses inquired of God and uh, said, you know, put your stick that rod in the waters. And those bitter waters became sweet. Also, we see that, that God provided manna for the children of Israel. And it was there at the tent door, right outside their tent. There was supernatural provision of food, of manna for them. And so God showed up in their lives to say, I'm not just judge, but I want you to turn to me. I want you to receive my word and, uh, and also move in the provision I have for you because I'm leading you to promise to your purpose and your destiny. And we find ourselves in the month of Savan and God wants to supernaturally provide for us as well, not just supernaturally in reality, in the realm of where you live, where you work, mm -hmm. but he wants to provide supernaturally, spiritually in your life as well, spiritually and physically in well, your life. It was God's original tent in Genesis one and two that the garden of Eden supplied all the oh. needs of Adam and Eve. Yeah. They didn't have to work for anything. Right. Everything was there for them. In fact, the rabbis teach that when, uh, and I love this, that when uh, Adam would reach out to draw a fruit mm -hmm. from a plant or a yeah. vegetable from a plant, mm -hmm. that literally the vegetable, the limbs would, or the leaves would reach toward Adam. So it was easy for him to do that. Right. Every time he walked through the cool of the day, the grass would lean and to soften down. his step mm -hmm. and lay down. Amen. And when, when they fell from the uh, garden because they had related uh, 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 spiritual, to sp spiritual to spiritual with God spiritually, and yeah. they fell from that position. Then the curse for Adam was he had to work by the sweat of his brow. But it was God's original intent mm -hmm. that we would not have to work by the sweat of our brow. And what happens there is that is God's plan, even in Genesis second, or excuse me, even in Second Corinthians chapter nine, verses ten, eleven, off our Father God, Yahweh, He supplies seed to the sower and to the farmer. And so our life is about seed, time, and harvest. And just like, watch this, just like when they took of the forbidden tree of good and evil, the fruit yes. there, yes. that was God's. It was not theirs. And because it had to work, what that was was God's tithe. Yeah. Okay. So when we give unto the Lord, this is the month of giving. This is the month to adjust our giving. This is the month to look at our giving to the Lord yeah. and to Israel. And when we adjust that, this is when God says, I will pour out blessings upon you that you cannot withhold. And so this is this is the way that we we are able to give just not to the Lord, but to in charity. Right. And we could talk about the three different types of giving in a Hebraic understanding of Scripture. Sure. And, and maybe we can do that. There's the tithe. OK. And that is the giving of the first of the first uh, increase. There's the first fruits, which is the giving at the Feast of Pentecost, the peace, Feast of Passover, Pentecost and Tabernacles. And that is what they were asked to do to come to Jerusalem and give a free will offering yes. called first fruits. Right. OK. And we know it that it wasn't the amount. No, it wasn't the amount. It wasn't the amount is that that three times a year 
they were to find themselves, they were to travel, yeah. they were to make effort, and they were to go and worship and bring an offering before the Lord at the feast days. That was going to be his gathering. Yeah. It was his high holy days. And it was quite a festive so, event. So we know, we know that in scripture that when we give a tithe to the Lord, according to Malachi chapter 4, the, uh, the windows of he heaven are open and the Father, Heavenly Father, rebukes the devourer and pours out blessings upon us. Now, when we give our first fruits, that is 60, 30, 60, and 100-fold blessing, right? And we find this Jesus talking about this in the New Testament at the parable of the sower. And when you sow in good ground, and that's Passover, Pentecost, and right. Tabernacles, mm -hmm. you will receive a 30-fold Passover, 60-fold Pentecost. That's double the double loaf blessing, right? Uh, which which is a sign of abundance. And then 100% blessing, or not 100%, 100-fold blessing at uh, Tabernacles. And, and the third way of giving is charity. Right. Sit. Uh, um, um, set, yeah, that's it. I say sedaka, you say sedka, <laughs> but it is a one to one blessing. When we give out of charity, God promises He will bless us in return, one to one. Right. And so, these are the types of giving that we should be focused on in this month and adjusting our lifestyle and adjusting where we're giving and where we're not giving and and what we have been have we been giving to ourselves and not to the lord have we been honoring him uh, or, right. you know all these things and it takes the holy spirit to teach us and to adjust this area of our giving amen it's true and you're going to find that in malachi chapter uh, four. four all right and you can go and read that it's that chapter of the embarrassing conversation that the children of Israel had with God and he had to set things in order. Remember, they were coming to God and said, we keep going into bondage. We, we, and then exile and then bondage and, and, and slavery and slavery. And we and want to know why, yeah. why is this happening to us? Yeah. And, and God says, well, because you have forgotten tithes and offerings. And you know, most, most <clears throat> um, years Excuse of me. our ministry, when we would have offerings, you know, we had offerings for missions and offerings for the youth and offerings for this and offerings for that. And, but when we saw the revelation of how God tied the tithe and the offerings and the feast days together in Malachi. It opened our eyes to see, oh my goodness, we can get in not only in timing with God in understanding the months, but in timing with God in our offerings as well. And uh, so it's quite a revelation, but well, let's get let, to let, wait, wait a minute, I wanna read yeah. the scripture. Leviticus 23 verses 17 through 22. Uh, uh, it talks about our, the, the giving that needs to be divine. Verse 22, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field when you reap, nor shall you gather any gleaming from your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And this is the picture of Ruth coming back, a yeah. Moabite woman, a widow, coming back with her mother-in-law to Bethlehem and being impoverished and going into the fields. And it was the time of harvest and, and Boaz's servants would leave the 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 leftover what we say here in Leviticus 23:22 would leave it for the poor and she would go and gather and that's where Boaz says who is that woman make sure you leave more for her where she is gleaning from our from my field more than enough plenty of abundance to sustain her for God's purposes you know she was at the right place at the right time yeah and God saw her through Boaz, his plan. Right. And, uh, you know, God sees us. He sees everything about us. He sees our heart and he sees our giving and he sees us in our day and how we war in our day and how in our day where we war over provision. I don't think we're the only ones who war over provision. But we war from a position of victory. And a, that, and a heavenly position on the right hand position. of the Father. That's right. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And we war by faith, knowing that it is God 
who is the giver of all things. And, and so many times I might be praying and I have a list to God and God, we need this, or we need that. Or, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm listing and I'm telling God of that, which he already knows, but it's positioning me in my prayer to seek him. And I also often uh, have heard the Lord say, you know, it's, it's like with Moses, this go pick up the stick and put it in the water. It's what's in our physical realm and that we're to be good stewards with that, which is in our physical realm. So God can take it, bless it and multiply it. So sometimes in prayer, I'm saying, God, open my eyes to see that which is around me, that it may be multiplied for your glory and meet this need. What a different way to pray, right? And That's seek right. The so, Lord. so the Hebrew uh, letter for the month of Savan is Gamel. Right. Gamel is the third letter of the Hebrew, uh, Hebrew alphabet. And its value is, is the number three. And it was 40 days Moses was on Mount Sinai where mm -hmm. God gave most the blueprints of the tabernacle. And, and so Gamel looks like a two hump camel. Okay. So uh, we call this uh, the month when your camels of provision are on your way. That's right. Uh, two hump camel. And where do we get that from? The, the first hump of the camel is the giving of the Torah. And the second hump, is the giving of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter one and two. So God gave the word first and he wrote it on the on the tablets and then he gave the Holy Spirit second and he gave the Holy Spirit and wrote his covenant on their hearts. And so we see both the two loaves and the two hump camel that rec represent this month. And the second a hump is the Holy Spirit. And we move in discipleship by the Holy Spirit's revelation, the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, the right. Holy Spirit in our lives. And so we've just come through, of course, the Feast of Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy right. Spirit. And what do we do with the Holy Spirit? Well, we walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That's he right. is indwelled in us and we walk, we walk daily. So Savannah is a month of continuously walking. It's not stopping. It's not quitting. It's not giving up when things get difficult. Is he following God? Is following God in faith? My circumstances may be shouting differently than what I'm proclaiming in God's word. And mm -hmm. so it's not the time to uh, give up and look at the wind and the waves, but look at the creator of the wind and the waves. You see, sometimes we see God so small in our own eyes and he wants us to see how big and how great and how wonderful he is. And walking in the presence of God releases us from our earthly chains and boundaries and we look heavenly we we are positioned with christ and we walk in his power resurrection power and in the so power the, of the so Holy the action Spirit. of this month is walking yeah. i'm walking with my savior every day i'm in his care that's right and, and so the the action of this month is walking with the lord that's right just like adam walked with god in the cool of the day in the garden of eden and this is the month to have mercy to oh, ask for yes. God's mercy, to oh, cry God. for God's mercy yes. for completeness in our lives. Because we get in situations where we pray and and it, it gets worse. You see, things don't change. And so we cry out for mercy. I'm very visual when I pray. And I do, do see uh, in my spirit realm and through my spirit eyes, I'll see Jesus. And he was sitting with me this one day and we were... I was praying. He was sitting with me. He had come and sat with me. And, and I say, oh, God, do you see this? And do you see that? I'm working very hard over here. And, and I, I want you to see this part of my garden. See what I've done. I said, but, Lord, there's some things that are beyond me. God, you know, I have to have the help of Jesus, my Savior. Jesus, come help me. And I looked up and I said, Jesus, what are you doing? And I saw Jesus in my vision, in my field, in my garden, over to the side, 
what are you doing, Jesus? And I saw him lifting these big boulders and these big rocks. I said, what are you doing, Jesus? And he turned and with love and compassion, he said, Debbie, I'm doing what you cannot do. I'm doing what you cannot do. That's awesome, you see, Debbie. when we walk with Jesus, he will do what we cannot do when we cast all our cares upon him. It's a journey. And not every day of the journey is easy. Not every day of your journey is filled with um, beds of roses. But the fragrance of the love of Jesus can be in your midst. And our tendency is to, be, yeah. to walk with the Lord uh, based upon feeling. Oh, and emotions. And emotions. Yes, and we want to quit. We want to give mm -hmm. up. Uh, but we know that in Scripture, mm -hmm. faith comes by hearing. And we know that in Hebrews 11, right. the, 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 all, the, all the forefathers, all the prophets, all those that went before us, they were counted righteousness, mm -hmm. uh, righteous because of their faith. They walked with the Lord. Abram walked with the Lord and became Abraham. We know that. And so it's, it's hard for us, but we've got to stay focused. And that's why we need the word of God on our heart and the empowering, uh, outpouring of the Holy <laughs> Spirit. Those yes. are the two things yes. that our focus is yes. for this month. Our yeah. walk must line up it with must. our talk. Oh, yes. Ouch. And with our praise. Oh, my goodness. God, God's listening. He, he sees us. And he watches. The enemy also watches our patterns, yes, our ways of responding, and then jumps right, on it, right. pounces mm -hmm. on it. No, we. The Lord desires for us to find our walk in Him, and that our walk line That's up right. with our talk. That's true. What's interesting too is this is the constellation month. The month of this uh, constellation is Gemini, and Gemini is the twins. And so, in the heavenlies, yeah. God is saying the law written on your heart by the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. the word of God and the Holy Spirit come together and bring into us a, a provision, both spiritually and physically. And, yeah. and it's so awesome. So the signs of the heavens tell the gospel story. That's right. Amen. And this also is the biblical month of the tribe of Zebulun. Okay. Zebulun were business people. Uh -huh. They were successful in the marketplace and they were successful in business. And they, they were the ones that really provided the resources yeah. for the nation of Israel. They were there. Zebulun was the sixth son of Jacob and Leah, and his name meant a habitation, and which also meant to dwell in an exalted fashion. Isn't that something? Wow habitation when we dwell with our father when jesus inhabits our day he will inhabit our gateways our eye gate our mouth gate our hands our feet what we do where we go the innermost parts of our being in our heart and zebulon was a faithful tribe to the lord and during the time of the judges they fought with deborah and they fought alongside uh, they fought alongside of deborah and alongside of gideon they also came to help david at hebron and when david's coronation at hebron um, was taking place they provided for the great feast at that time you see they were there not only being loyal to the things of god and with the heart of God for Israel, but they were also loyal in providing for Israel and for King David. They show up. So even when Hezekiah returned to God and God gave him an extended years and he brought Israel back to remembrance of the feast days, when Hezekiah reinstituted Passover, guess what tribe was there to help Hezekiah? Zebulun. So they're showing up through the word of God, loyal. They're showing up through the word of God, providing, being uh, used of God. So I, would, I yeah. would say that they would have the gift of giving. Uh, from the New yeah. Testament, one of the gifts of the Holy uh -huh. Spirit was giving. 
they were pharaohs. They were uh, bakers and butlers. Uh, what was what does that mean? Refer to the Old Testament with Joseph. These are men that open doors that pro have provision to open doors uh, to open doors and to make things happen. Yeah. Okay. And 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 so they were loyal. They were. But what's interesting in the New Testament, two of the disciples were from the tribe of Zebulon. And they were James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Right. And they were great fishermen. And they provided for their families. And they provided for for uh, Israel mm -hmm. because they they were they were uh, fishermen and they would sell in the market. And when Jesus resurrects from the grave right. and he shows up, one of the places he shows up is back on the Sea of Tiberias, which is the Sea of Galilee at the city Tiberias. Right. And, and they go back fishing, and Jesus says, have you do you have any food yet? And they said, no, we fished all night. It's in John 21. And uh, he says, cast your nets on the other, other side. side. Yeah. And we taught about this last uh, a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, several weeks. Uh, and so what that means is they became not just, they were not just great business people, fishermen, but they became fishers of men also. Now, this tribe of Zebulun is linked with bestowing blessing and the ability to prosper through maritime trade. So they were great businessmen. You see, you can be a great businessman and a great man of God and a great woman of God, too, and be the catalyst for the things of God and the provision. Let's rephrase that. You can be a great businesswoman or yes. businessman and be a great man or woman for God. Well, that's right. God has a plan, and these are the characters, characteristics of this tribe of Zebulun. They were businessmen. They were loyal. They were warriors, and they were givers. And God used them throughout uh, the Word of God through the Bible. Yeah. So our prayer is that this month, the month of Savan, that God would get you to focus on the, His Word and the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost and adjust those areas in your life right. of giving so that you can have the two full blessing of, of God because it's seed time and harvest and the mercy of God that will change right. our giving. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you for listening in. God bless you. Jim and Debbie Lehman, Wellspring Israel. Amen.